Bonjour, I'm Ying, and this is how I use Notion as a university student. I've mentioned this in this other video that I have a lot of things going on in my life and Notion is my biggest support system when it comes to maximizing my workflow. So today I will show you how I leverage Notion's features to do all of that. This is not a beginner's video on how to use Notion. There are plenty of other resources out there to show you the ropes of how to get started and the basics, but I will share a lot of advices that have personally helped me stay more organized. So first of all, I recommend having a home page where you organize all the main pages you want to have on Notion so that everything is contained on a general page rather than standing alone as an individual page. Watch out when you're creating a page in a page. I try to limit the number of layers of pages to, I would say maximum four if you need five, but that's like gros max. Because once you have a page and a page and a page and a page, like it just gets so messy, you will never access that information again and you will have trouble finding it. You want to keep your Notion structure horizontal. So you would have like a page, a page, a page, a page, maybe like three or four layers instead of having a vertical structure where you have a page, a page, a page, a page. I highly recommend you to take a couple of minutes to learn Notion's shortcuts. The biggest mistake I see with people using Notion is that they don't leverage the databases enough or they have too many pages in pages or they use too many different databases. So for example, if you have some classes per semester, do you store them simply as individual pages? Do you put them in a database per semester or do you make a database of all of your classes and then have different views for different semesters? You see what I mean? When you have connections between these pages, it makes most sense to store them in the database in case you want to reference them in the future. So yeah, try to recycle databases instead of creating new databases for every event. Notion does have a bit of a learning curve, which is why a lot of people opt for using templates from other people, but don't just duplicate somebody's entire workspace because you might not need what they need. So before you duplicate a template, you have to ask yourself like, okay, what attracts me about this template? How does it fit my needs? And once you answer those questions, then you can really find what templates fit your needs rather than just blindly duplicating templates and make your needs fit the templates. Like it doesn't work that way. You should always start from the problem and then working backwards. I'm not trying to discourage you from downloading templates though because I think there are a lot of amazing templates out there. And to me, it makes more sense to leverage somebody's already established process rather than starting my own. But you should just be wary when you're duplicating templates to not duplicate anything you don't need. My last tip is that if you have to do it twice, automate it. What I mean by that is to leverage the templates on Notion, whether it's a template for a new page or a template for a database page. Do it twice, automate it. Welcome to my Notion. As I mentioned earlier, having a homepage I think is really important to keep everything neat and contained or else you just have individual pages floating somewhere you don't know. I have my goals that I set at the end of last year. I'm doing okay, a little behind on some, but these are made to be a little more ambitious. I have my word of the year here with a little description and some habits uh, that I like to build um, and they are kind of daily reminders of what I should be doing every day. Here I have a brain dump, which I will go into detail a bit later on. And then I have my to-dos of the week. To be honest, I only use this for repeated tasks. So when school starts again, I will be inputting my weekly assignment deadlines on here. But on a day-to-day, -day, I use Google Calendar and I use time blocking. So whenever I have a to-do, I just dump it in my calendar with the time and that's how I get stuff done. Underneath here are all of the pages that I use. My most popular ones that I use are probably Academic Path, Learning Notes, Work Growth, Content Creation, Travel, Self Data, and the other ones are used a little less. So the ones that I use the most, they're favorited on the side so I have easy access. If I want to add another category for some reasons, I just click this template and I can add in my pages very easily. 
At the bottom here, I have a course calendar that's linked to my original course calendar database. So let's take a look at that in a second. My academic path page is definitely the page that I use the most. So my brain dump is a synced block that I have copied in, I would say, all of my pages. And its purpose is so that I can dump whatever I have on my mind. So if I have a to-do, let's say, that I will write down a programming assignment. Oops, all caps. Why are we screaming? Programming assignment. And then later on, I can go back to my life here, go to my brain dump and then use this toggle to add a to-do. This is extremely helpful because my brain just thinks sporadically. I could be on one workspace and then think about something for another workspace and I would just dump it in the brain dump and later on drag it to wherever is necessary. All right, so this academic path page, very helpful. I have my database of all of my classes, so we can take a look at that. I also have a GPA calculator here, all of my instructors, as well as the semesters tag. The semesters tag is very important, so I can create different versions of my classes here. And we also have the Zoom link here. My courses are still online for the fall, so this is extremely helpful. But it could be a link to, let's say, a course syllabus, um, a specific website that your class needs. Each of my tables here are filtered based on the semester here. So now I can have different views. I'm going into my third semester uh, for fall, and I've set up this filter here. And if I want to add another course, for example, uh, what dev, you can see that it's automatically tagged to third semester. While we are here, I also have a template for my course information. So here I like to store my professor's name, email, office hours, a course description, a course syllabus. It could be text or it can also be a PDF. Uh, just because I personally had to do credit transfers and having a copy of the syllabus is more important than you think it is. And then here, this is one fat course calendar database with all of the assignments that I've had to do through all of my classes. So notice how we are not creating a new course calendar for this specific class. We are adding to this big database of assignments. The reason why we do that is because we can have everything connected and because if I go back to my life here, at the bottom, I can have a master calendar of all of my assignment deadlines. Here, what I would do is for this specific web dev class, I would add in a filter like this, add a filter. Remember to always add the filter before you add items so that they are automatically tagged or else you're going to have to tag them manually. So here you can find your course contains going to do ITM web dev because you want your course calendars content to be connected to your all classes content and I have already linked these two databases together if we want to do assignment one set in a deadline September 18th we have this automatically tagged to uh, third semester because this is a roll up and voila I can always go back to this class to find information. With this deadline, if I go back to my personal life, I can see upcoming calendar view. I have today, see, assignment one. This is why you want to have as least databases as possible and as connected as possible so you can create magical things like this. You input the information once, it appears everywhere, saves time. I like to have a space where I can write down important information and this course calendar is our master calendar. I'm a data student so I will explain to you what does a parent and child database mean. So in the real world a parent can have lots of children, you can have a hundred children if you want to, but a child can only have a set of biological parents. In the context of my classes, do you think my all classes is the parent database or do you think that my course calendar is the parent database? 
one class can have a lot of assignments. So in this case, your all classes is the parent database and the course calendar is the child database. I hope that kind of makes sense. That's kind of the fundamentals of building databases and how you can work to connect your different databases together to improve your workflow. So here I have my fattest calendar with all of my assignments since my first year. Here I keep a couple of resources of links that I often access as well as some toggles of research uh, that I was doing. Underneath here I have my course progression. On the right is the courses that I should be taking and the order that I should be taking them in. But I'm extra so I changed some things around also because I'm planning to go on exchange. And Notion is amazing because I just duplicated this normal course progression and I just toggled, moved some things around like this. Very, very simple. Love the blocks. Sometimes I also do research on professors from ratemyprofessor.com and leave those as a comment so that when I'm doing my course selections, I can know in priority which courses to pick. Let's continue. Some research about exchange school and finally just some other information that I, that I dumped here. If we come back and take a look at my specific semester pages, I just like to have an overview and you can see that none of this information is new. They're all linked to other pages, so I don't need to maintain this. It's automatically maintained through other changes that I make. Other information that I dump here is just a schedule and a screenshot of my grade calculations. That's it for my academic path page. Just one more thing to mention, because my homepage is a page that I often access, I wanted to have my course calendar overview here as well, just so that I have an idea of the deadlines that are coming up and that may have passed already. And I have this filter here that's deadline is on or before one week from now and deadline is on or after one week ago. Next up, there's my projects and skills. This is what I use to track some of my learnings. It could be a language. Yeah, I think it's only been languages so far. Oh, it could also be certifications. I mean, I did a bit of Pinterest Academy, but I wouldn't say I did lots of it. So I, this is where I dump my notes. These pages can get quite extensive. This is my entire page uh, on learning ASL. It's not exactly organized, but I have all of the information that I need and the quick links as well. I also have a database of vocabulary. Here, let me just explain it again. This is my parent board. This is my child board. I have parent, which is my topics that I'm learning, and then child is how I break down my learning process. Next one, learning notes. I might even use this page more than my academic path page. This is where I store all of my notes, whether it's for a networking event or a coffee chat. Um, this is where everything happens. And I do have an amazing template that works very well for me that I call Learn. So if I have an event, let's say um, Yang's YouTube video, you would put I would take notes, let's say you write some stuff about me, you learn that I'm a student, a business tech student, tech student. I usually paste a social link, so it could be LinkedIn or it could be Instagram or a website as well. I just input that there. I would take screenshots since most of the events have been virtual, I would dump them here. Some of my learnings that I jog down, some of the questions that I have, and some of the things that I'm curious to learn more about and do research on my own. So this has worked fantastically uh, and it's adaptable for coffee chats, videos that I learn online, networking events, conferences. This is what I use. I love it. Work growth page. My work growth page is what I use to track any sort of applications that I have going on. It could be for a program, so I had applied for the Canon's Futures program, or most of the time they're just internships that I apply to. I have a filter here that says where status does not contain next time or archived. So next time I use it when the company actually reaches back to me and they say we're not a right fit. If they never respond and it's been like, over like eight months, then I would just archive it. 
I also have a sort here for last update, so I manually update my applications. So for example, if a recruiter reaches back out to me that says, hey, we need more information or be happy for an interview, I would put an update and then I would change the status here. So I know everything that is going on like this. And this database is connected to my company's database uh, where I can store information about that company. I have a couple of notable mentions uh, just from a coffee chats that I've had. I also like to keep a copy of the job posting here because I've had instances and my friends have struggled with this as well. We apply for something and they come back for an interview and then they take down the job listing. So we don't even know what we applied to in the first place and what are some of the skills that they require. So now I don't take any chances. I keep a copy of everything. We've covered all of my pages under learning journey. We're going into self data now. So self data is where I keep my journals. I'm not very consistent about it, to be honest. I've given myself a rule where if I have a dream, then I have to journal because then I can track my dreams and they they get kind of crazy. But I track my happiness, my learnings, if I drank enough water, if I read, if I worked out. Yeah not doing so great on that front. But I do use a template that I love. It has been adapted from a template similar to the 5 minutes journal, but I write down last night's dream, a couple of pictures that reminds me of today or that represents today, a short story, amazing things that happened today and some thoughts on my mind. Like right now I'm thinking about eating fried chicken, I would probably jot that down, you know. On the bottom here, this is just a page where I store all of the personality tests that I take. I just like to track it. It's not very organized. There's no system to it. I just keep track of it. Here is my yearly manifesto. So this is the original database of the goals that appear on my life's page. I create uh, my OKRs for the year um, at the end of the previous year. I started doing a yearly review that has quite a lot of prompts. If you click new year, on the template, you will be able to see all of the different questions that are asked. I'm not going to open this because there's some personal stuff in here. Next up, Commonplace Book. Commonplace Book is where I store all of my quotes, books, vocabulary, and some songs. There's nothing too special about this page, um, except that I should be reading more books. But I do have a book template that I like. It looks like this. My brain dump page is literally just a brain dump. If I want to jog something down, if I have an idea, I dump it in there. And then I have a bucket list that I've recently started. You can see it's uh, created not too long ago, but I just wanted to keep track of uh, some things I want to accomplish in my life. Moving on to creation, I have content creation. A lot of my templates are based on other people's templates or are very much inspired by. So this is my OG content roadmap where I can plan all of my different content, whether it's for YouTube, Instagram. Yeah, that's it. That's all I have right now. But underneath, and I have a specific Kanban board for YouTube. And I'm not going to show you my ideas. Just know that there's lots of exciting things coming up. So what I love here is my template. It's called YouTube. And when you click it, Dun, dun, dun. I have a toggle for content. If there's some planning that I want to do, I would dump it there. And I have a description of just a blurb that I reuse uh, and I would fill it in based on my video's content and some tags as well as some video inspirations if there are any. For TikTok, it's the same principle. It's the content roadmap, but this one is filtered by channel is TikTok. Brightbubble and my website are a work in progress. There's nothing too structured there, but I did want to have a specific page for those specific categories. Then I have my dog. If you have a pet, this is useful. I have some personal information, some measurements, some shops that I like for her, um, some tricks that I was teaching her. Uh, she's a smart cookie. Uh, and then here are some of her medical records. I don't track her expenses. I'm not sure if I wanted to, but I have it here just in case I decide to change my mind. Travel and events. I love this one. This is life changing because when I travel, I love making checklists. So if I want to create a new page, 
I do this if I'm traveling somewhere. Let's say we're going to Quebec City. I like to put um, the country's flag uh, because why not? Quebec City and I have a trip template here. Chef's kiss. This is this is life changing. Remember when I told you if you have to do it twice automated, this is automated. So now I have a checklist already made for me of all of my tech gadgets that I need to bring and some other specific toggles that you should definitely customize to your needs. So if we take a look at my past trips, uh, old port photo shoot for example, stuff I bring, I just drop them here, things to do, places to go. You can also embed maps, which is wonderful, and some picture ideas uh, from different people. Here my worldwide recommendations is still a work in progress, but my goal is to jog down all of the different recommendations that I see on Instagram or just on social media in general of locations to take photos, restaurants. I'm hoping to build this database um, as I go. Recipes, pretty simple, uh, but I do have a checklist at the bottom here of food that I always buy. Lastly, we have our personal CRM, which is where I store information uh, about my friends instead of just storing them in my contacts. I have their email, their birthdays, and their last updates because I don't have a great memory, so I have to jog things down. And I also have a template here where you can jot down their address if you want to send them gifts, the stuff they like, some gift ideas or other miscellaneous notes that you want to jot down, which I find pretty useful. I especially use the gift ideas one because somebody would mention something in the middle of the year and then you're like, oh, that's a good idea for their birthday. But by the time it's their birthday, you're not going to remember, so just jot it down. Lastly, there's financials and I'm not going to present this because I frankly don't use this at all. I don't have a great system for budgeting just because of the nature of my lifestyle as of this moment. I currently use Google Form and its spreadsheet to track my expenses, but I don't budget per se per category and based on my income. But my life is always changing, so if I do eventually uh, work on this financials page, I will let you guys know and give you an updated Notion tour. I feel like it suddenly got really dark, but thank you guys. Ooh. Thank you so much for staying with me all the way till the end. I know it was jam-packed with information, but I hope this was helpful. I have linked my template in the description box. I do strongly recommend you to watch my two other videos, which are um, my resources for students as well as my digital workspace because, listen, my entire life I've been taught to save money and be efficient, so I'm just trying to pass along as much knowledge as I can. I wish you guys all the best on your Notion journey. Bye!